afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you, sir. Your name is Sri Kumar or Ravinder Kumar? My name is Sri Kumar, sir. Sri Kumar. Yes, sir. Ravinder Kumar is your father, sir? Yes, sir. You're from Koripur? Yes, sir. Fond of cricket? I find that thing a lot of interest in cricket. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm an avid watcher of cricket, though I have not played it very actively. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your father? So my father uh, was a migrant laborer in uh, in the state of Doha in Qatar, uh, but he returned from uh, during the wake of COVID crisis and is now in the home. Uh, no, yes. Sir. Mm. Tell me something about Kudamsil. Kudumbashri. 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 So Kudumbashri is a uh, self-help group, uh, is a large self-help group in Kerala, which is led by women uh, particularly, who is into the social sector and creating employment opportunities for women, entrepreneurial uh, opportunities, so that they can gain financial independence mainly. How it's working? So it is working in a very good manner as of yet, especially during the COVID crisis when a lot of women were rendered unemployment and was facing financial crisis, Kudumbashri was helpful for them. Okay. In what all areas it is working? It is doing a lot of things? Yes, sir. Uh, it is mainly in ensuring food security for women. Secondly, in the entrepreneurial opportunity, gaining uh, self-employment opportunities and the health sector as well. Okay. Yes. Local self-government. Yes, sir. Uh, if you compare with any other state, yes, sir. What, is, what are your views? How those are working in Kerala and yes, those are working in other states? Yes, sir. So, with respect to local self-government in Kerala, I think it is one of the best examples that we can state out in India because of the devolvement of power to the uh, government uh, official representatives in the local level. And also the accountability that is also ensured through model code of conduct and an ombudsman that has also been appointed for local self-government is a method in the step in the right direction. Uh, with respect to many other states where we can no, witness... It's only development of powers? No, sir. Powers are devolved by many states? Yes, sir. I think with respect to the development of power in the 12th, uh, 12th and the 11th schedule, Kerala was one of the early runners in development. It's only powers or something else also? Yes, sir. The people's participation is also very active and also the social sector. Improves. Development involves three things, three Fs we call. Yes, sir. What are those? Functions, functionaries and uh, funds, functions, functions and functionaries. Yes. yes, sir. So, functionary is also important? Yes, sir. Yeah. The functionaries is missing in other states. Absolutely, sir. And funds are also missing. Yes. How they could do that functionaries? So I believe uh, through uh, development of grants from the uh, Kerala government budget and uh, that can be done. Secondly, also by ensuring that the taxation collection no, tax... Functionaries, functionaries. Functionary. They have uh, recruited so many people yes, or... So they have recruited a lot of people for the local self-government. Secondly, it is also about uh, the appointment, which is from the Kerala executive is also higher on the higher. Uh, so a lot of uh, persons are on deputation. Yes, sir. That's why that is functioning well. Yes, sir. Okay. Sure. Tell you. me something about bureaucracy now. Yes, if you compare bureaucracy of Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Yes, sir. Two positive things in your mind, two negative things. Yes, sir. So I believe the uh, attitude of the bureaucrats in Kerala towards the people is also very compassionate, which is also witnessed in other states. Uh, this is one positive aspect I have witnessed. Secondly, the uh, the kind of uh, public awareness about how to approach a bureaucrat and how to attain uh, the public function is also very witnessed in Kerala. I'm not really aware of how it is functioning in Tamil Nadu per se, uh, so I may not be able to Any other state? articulate. Uh, sorry, sir, but I'm not able to recollect you're not at this able point. To, you're not tried also to find out? Uh, as of that now, I have not When tried, you are sir. filling your choice, yes, you would have thought about it, whether I should fill Kerala, yes, sir. what type of bureaucracy will be there, which you know, yes, sir. in other states, yes, sir. how different it will be. Yes, sir. So, I have, uh, if I can point out one reason, uh, one thing which I have noticed is that uh, people in many states have an... Uh, feeling of subordination towards the executive that is there. So I believe that should probably witness a change and should see public servants from a more democratic perspective is what I have witnessed. Arogya Pacha, you heard of? Arogya Pacha, yes sir. Mm. Uh, sir, I believe it is one of the most medicinal call plant with medicinal qualities uh, that is found in the tribe, uh, one of the found in the forest areas of which Kerala. A, which area? Uh, so I believe it is found in the Idiki region, Idiki district of Kerala. Agastya. Yes, sir. Agastya Mala in the Idiki district of Kerala mm -hmm. is what I found. Okay, by uh, some name, particular name is their tribals? Uh, so, Irula tribe is what I can recall. Kani, Kani tribes. Kani tribes, okay, sir. Irula tribes in uh, that region? 
No sir, Irula tribes is primarily found in Tamil Nadu region. However, Bondi... Northern Tamil Nadu, entirely mm -hmm. different direction. Yes. So, what do you know about uh, PM Gati Shakti yes, National sir, Master Plan? Yes. So, PM Gati Shakti is one of the central government's plan to coordinate all the infrastructural activities and ensure that the bottlenecks found within different departments is overcome, especially with the road transport, water transport, water commission and electricity is overcome and to make sure that infrastructure development is done in a seamless manner. Hmm. Yes, sir. You know, is it a new plan or uh, what? What what does this uh, Gati Shakti? What are all these aims? I'm not able to understand what when you say Gati Shakti Master Plan. Yes, sir. Is it some new plan they are giving you, or uh, what else is happening there? Uh, sir, I'm sorry, I'm not able to recollect at this point whether what are, whether it was a new plan or not, sir. Okay. Okay. Sir. Right. In Kerala, yes, under sir. Gati Shakti, what are all the projects uh, implemented? Yes. Sir. So one of the major projects is done between the Kerala Roadways Department and the KC, the Kerala State Electricity Board and the Kerala Water, uh, Water Corporation and ensuring that when a road work is being done, uh, there is a clear communication within the water department so that the roads are not broken in a haphazard manner and affecting the traffic. Mm. Uh, so this is one of the coordination programs that is being done in Kerala right now. Okay. Is it part of the Shakti? No. It's not part of the Shakti. Okay, sir, I may not be aware of that. Sir. Sir, yes. Your mother yes. is a retired teacher. No, sir. My mother is a working teacher as such. Now. Working teacher? Yes. My father, father is a retired. Yes, sir. Yes. Working teacher? Yes. Which class? Uh, so, she is a primary school teacher for yes. classes from 1 to 7. She taught you also? Yes, sir. She taught me huh? as well. Yes, sir. Okay. What are all the advantages and yes. disadvantages of being a son of a teacher? Yes. So primary advantage is that uh, we have an easier access to resources in the school and easier access to teachers, fellow teachers. Being a son of a teacher gives that advantage. One of the disadvantages is that the, there is a great deal of attention on yourself on being a teacher's son and you are being restricted in expressing your opinion at some point of time. So this is one disadvantage I had faced personally when I was in school. And secondly, uh, my mother being a lot more stricter towards me uh, when she's personally teaching me in the class is also one disadvantage I have faced. Sir. Yeah, we are on the same page, don't oh, worry. Yes, Thank you, sir. Okay, some, tell me something about, uh, what do you know about FATF? FATF. Mm -hmm. So, Financial Action Task Force is uh, one of the global organization under the auspices of G20 uh, G and G7, which was also created to ensure that the money laundering and trafficking of, uh, and illegal uh, sponsoring of, Tra uh, tr uh, especially uh, drug trafficking and uh, terrorist financing is stopped. So it is an organized, it is a mechanism between the countries to stop the illegal financing. What is the mechanism actually? Yes, FATF is what? Yes. So they have different mechanisms under FATF to ensure that there is a, no state sponsoring of such illegal activities. So they list down the countries based on uh, gray list, black list and ensure that the... the what is the basic document on which they list gray, black or yes, sir. red list? Sir, uh, if I can recollect, it is the uh, platform or the document within FATF that is ensured. I'm not able to recollect the exact name of the document at this point. FATF recommendations. FATF recommendations. Uh, 40 recommendations. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sir, uh, year 2020 is one of the, the crucial years yes, sir. for India yes, sir. when it comes to FATF. Yes, Why? Sir, uh, so 2022. Sorry, sir. Thank you. So I believe 2022 was one of the uh, a a years in which the FATF had decided to uh, ensure that Pakistan remains in the grey list, which was one of India's greatest uh, uh, demands in FATF to ensure they do not fund terrorism. No, that's not. That is, India will be evaluated this year. India will be evaluated. Should have been evaluated in 2020 because okay. of COVID, it doesn't happen. Okay, so it didn't happen. Now this year they are going to evaluate India. Okay. So then we will come to know where we are placed. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Uh, in taxation, yes, sir. What is the uh, big picture of the Indian tax collections? Yes. So, uh, if I may ask you, are you referring to the figures that is being a uh, big picture? Or yes, figures. Okay. What so, is the total? Uh, revenue which is collected. 
So uh, I, I do not know the exact figure of the tax collections for this figure. However, I could probably uh, shed some light on what are we aiming towards in the future. So if with respect to tax collection, I believe we are <coughs> looking at simplifying the tax labs in terms of direct tax collection and ensuring that there is a rationalization of tax collection and improving our tax base is what I can recollect at this point. What is the difference between simplification and rationalization? Yes, sir. So both are essentially in a similar manner where we, do, we reduce the complexities within the tax labs and ensure that uh, we reduce the amount of rebates what or the exemptions. What are the complexities? Yes, sir. So I believe now we have multiple taxes, uh, multiple tax labs, both within direct tax and within indirect tax, such as GST. So I believe there needs to be a simplification of these tax labs, reducing the tax lab and broadening the tax bracket is what we can do at this point. What is the bracket? Sir, so I believe uh, in the direct taxes, up to 3 lakh is now tax exempted. So now uh, what we can probably do is that the higher tax labs can be broadened and the bracket can be widened. The income tax uh, bracket can be widened. Okay. Going back to my original question, yes, what is the uh, big picture in terms of percentage of various taxes? It can oh. So uh, with respect to GST, if I can come, uh, I think from 0 percentage GST up to 28 oh. percent. What is it? Out of total collections, how much indirect taxes contribute, how much direct tax contribute? Okay. Do you have any rough idea? Yes, sir. So I believe our indirect tax collection is higher than our direct tax collection. And within the indirect tax collection, I believe it is a corporate taxes. Uh, sorry, uh, within the direct taxes, I believe it is a corporate taxes which uh, uh, have the major chunk and the rest is taken by the income tax. Thanks. Very good. Uh, yes. So you are fairly familiar with budget. Uh, no, no, sir, I have not gone through the budget in details. Oh, no, yes, but, sir. You know, major point. You know. Yes, sir. Tell us something about crystal currency. Crystal currency. Yeah, crypto, sorry. Oh, cryptocurrency. <laughs> oh, right. So, yeah. cryptocurrency is one of the latest uh, techni technological innovations in the, uh, huh. the tech currency sector where we are uh, trying to digitalize that particular currency and ensure that rather than the paper money, we are using the digital version of the currency, which is much more secure and much more uh, harder to manipulate. Is it ever possible to have only cryptocurrency and do away with the, this paper currency? Is it possible for uh, a country like India? No, sir, I do not believe a complete elimination of paper currency would be possible in a country like mm -hmm. India because many of the pop majority of the population are not uh, digitally illiterate or uh, probably do not have an idea on how to use such cryptocurrency. So it is not easily eliminated. Do so you think taxing cryptocurrency will be easy? No, so I would not believe that taxing cryptocurrency would be easy because the regulations yet needs to come because the entire area of cryptocurrency is still yet to be explored to be a lot because especially the security concerns with cryptocurrency remains now. So I believe taxation would require a lot more research and development into it. In the budget, some tax has been proposed. No? What is the extent of it? Sorry, sir, I'm not able to refer. 30%. 30%. Thank but you, sir. Tell me, who will be paying? The receiver or the giver? Sir, I believe it should be the receiver of that particular currency. Why, why do you say that? Sir, I believe because the owners or the tax incidence that is being uh, levied is upon the receiver, I believe. That is the reason they are supposed to pay the taxes. In cryptocurrency, the incident cannot be shifted? Uh, I'm not able to recollect at this point, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, that's it. So, what is the extent of deficit in the budget proposed? So I believe the fiscal deficit uh, at this percentage is about 6 percentage of the GDP. 6.4 okay. percent. But as per FRBM, what it should have been? So you it should FRBM? be. What yes, is the FRBM? Sir, so, uh, fiscal regulatory and budget management. Now fiscal? Fiscal regulation and budget management. Responsibility. Fiscal responsibility and budget management. Okay. So, so what it should have been? So it should be below 5 percentage of the GDP is what I uh, recommend. 3. 3 percent. But then now we are almost double of that, no? Yes, sir. So what is the point in having a road map? Yes, sir. Is there any sense? Yes, sir. Uh, I believe there is a purpose for having a road map, uh, but I believe the current fiscal deficit is also uh, put partly uh, as a result of the current COVID-19 waves and the existing pressures on uh, economy such as inflationary and the global slowdown as a result has affected it. So I believe uh, the road map will help us to have an idea about where we should restrict ourselves and give us an idea that uh, uh, that the economy should be restricted before going into a dangerous trap. Good. Yes. What do you understand by monetization of an asset? What exactly is monetization? 
Yes, sir. Monetization of an asset uh, refers to the uh, transformation of that particular asset into monetary terms and ensuring that we have returns or we have considerable returns from an asset before it turns into a bad debt. Now, we had a concept called National Monetization Pipeline. Yes, sir. Why was it called pipeline? Why not a plan? Uh, sir, sorry, sir, I'm not able to. Uh, in for a minute. Yes, sir. So, I believe. Uh, the reason why it is told as a pipeline is because it is a progressive plan that will realize in a uh, in a in, in a particular number of years rather than a plan which would be probably in a lot more shorter term. Yeah, yeah. pipeline means it's a flow. Yes, sir. It's not a constant thing. It's a constant. It means more can be added already okay. if you have been listed. Okay. So it's not a one-time thing. Okay. Sir. Thank okay. You. Good. Now. <clears throat> Uh, what is the level of corporate tax in the budget? Any idea? No. So I believe it is north of 22 percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe. It, yes, sir. I believe it was north of 22 percentage. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's good to believe, no? Yes, sir. Okay, tell me, you studied in MES Indian School. What yes, is sir. this MES? Sir, MES is a short form for Middle East Educational Society. But it's run by Government of India. No, sir. Uh, right. It was situated in the city of Doha in Qatar. It right. was in school which is affiliated to the CBSC. However, it is run by private entities. Oh, syllabus and all uh, the same. Yes, sir. CBSC. And yes, sir. teachers, are they Indian? Yes, sir. Teachers are mostly Indians. We had uh, one or two teachers from Bangladesh. Other one teacher. Oh, that's yes. good. So, you are able to join college education here. Yes, sir. I was able to. Yes, sir. Yeah. You worked in Ernest and Yang also. Right? Yes, sir. How was that arrangement? I mean, how did you find it? Yes, sir. So I got into or I was I joined oh. Ernst & Young through a campus placement drive that happened during the final year of my college. Uh -huh. I joined in the capacity of an, a tax analyst who was serving my clients in UK with respect to serving their tax requirements in UK Revenue Department. Oh, you were there for two years, eh? Yes, sir. That's really great. <coughs> and before you, that, you were in a university, is it? Yes, sir. What uh, were you doing there? Yes, sir. Actually, after Ernst & Young, I joined the university in the role of an adjunct faculty mm -hmm. uh, to associate with a project by government of Karnataka named Project Jnana Samanvaya, which was a public education outreach program to improve the quality of higher education in Karnataka. Mm -hmm. So, and I was there the... for almost a no, few months. Yes. Three sir. months only. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, last question. Yes, sir. Your first preference is foreign service. Yes, sir. This one or two very minor things. What is Parsana Non Grata? So, persona non grata is a di diplomatic term where we use mm. when the diplomat is not a, uh, is not allowed by the host country to serve anymore in that particular country and is being asked to repatriate into their home country. And that diplomat normally twenty four hours. Yes, sir. In twenty four hours. But time. whenever it happens, immediately the other country will also do the same. Yes, sir. It is a retaliatory measure by Can the other country. Can you decide any reset? I mean, some example of Indian case. Uh, sorry, sir, I'm not able to recollect an Indian case. However, I recollect a case in USA and China where uh, China had declared a lot of US diplomats persona non grata. India, Pakistan also. Yes, sir. They yes. did so, we also did. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, sir. last. What yes, is sir. this uh, stippled visa? Visa you get stamped, but yes, stippled visa they give Chinese. Stapled do you know visa. the context? Sir, I didn't hear the word properly. What stippled is visa. Stapled visa. Stapled it, yeah. Yes, sir. No, sir, I have not heard about it. Yeah, so I've heard. Far. I do not tell some people wanted to go. Okay, sir. So the Chinese fellows. Okay. They didn't put it on the stamp. <coughs> but why did they do that? Sir, uh, personally, I have not read about that particular incident so Think far. Think about so, a minute. Uh, sir, I believe. Uh, Arunachal Pradesh being a bordering uh, state with China, I believe uh, some of the individuals had crossed over to the Chinese border and... No, no, no. they were very much Indian. Okay. Yes. Okay, to yes. show that uh, Arunachal is still there. Okay. I'm sort of... Fine, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, you said that uh, you were working with uh, the university yes, yes, on higher education, how to make it uh, better or yes, improve. So, what was your take of it? So, uh, three takeaways which I took from the program was uh, the rural universities in Karnataka and in the sub, uh, sub uh, uh, semi-urban regions faced a lot of difficulties with respect to funding and with respect to the bottlenecks that the student faces in terms of soft skills. Many of them were highly talented, however, they were lacking in soft skills to, in, uh, to get into a proper corporate job. Secondly, I believe the quality of the teaching had also to improve in such universities uh, where the teachers were also not aware of the recent developments in the edutech uh, sector. 
Thirdly, I also believe the uh, syllabus that needs to be, uh, you know, in line with the recent developments in the educational industry. So, was it uh, uh, in the same university or you were going out somewhere to different schools or was there a tie-up with some government schools? How was it? Yes, ma'am. So, this project was designed in a way where private and deemed to be universities in Karnataka was asked to adopt a particular university in the rural areas of Karnataka and help them by designing the modules to train their students, teachers as well as their governors. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And your mother is a teacher. Yes, ma'am. So, what is um, your view on Anganwadis? How important they are? Yes, ma'am. So, I mean, uh, ma'am, I believe uh, Anganwadis are very crucial for a child's early development and ensuring that those students who are, or those children who come from very economically poor situations, this is a place for them to ensure that nutritional intake is also ensured, along with the early child care is provided to them. So I believe in that respect, Anganwadis are very crucial for a country like India, where there is a huge set of malnutrition and educational gap. So has there any recent changes in Anganwadis, where they are operating from? I'm not able to uh, remember any of it at, at, at this point. Okay. Yeah. And how uh, well they are working there in your area? Ma'am, uh, in my home state in Kerala and as well as my home district, which is mm -hmm. Korikot, mm -hmm. I believe it is functioning in a very uh, positive and uh, efficient manner because they have been able to ensure that the messages of healthcare uh, immunization mm -hmm. is being spread to the students at a very young age, as well as mothers are also being asked to take necessary health. So I believe it is working in a very efficient manner now. Okay, so you also mentioned about SHG, self-help groups. Yes, ma'am. So how are these made? Ma'am, self-help groups are formed with an association of women or association of individuals, like-minded individuals who come together with a similar objectives and they pool up the finances to ensure that their group objectives are being how met. How big is a group? Ma'am, it can be anywhere from four to uh, and above. It can be any, any, can be any group starting from four members and above. Suppose there are four women or ten women, they want to form a group. What yes, is the process? Ma'am, I believe the first thing they have to uh, do is that uh, not aware of the regulatory process. However, if a group of women wanted to start an SSG, they can open up a bank account, formal bank account with the help of S SSG bank linkages program with on the under the auspices of NABAR. Mm -hmm. And they can ensure that they have a particular objective with respect to entrepreneurial and start up the business is what mm -hmm. I believe. Debate. You, had, uh, you were the best speaker at uh, National Debate Championship. Yes, ma'am. So, what's the difference between a debate and a declamation? Ma'am, I've not heard about declamation uh, yet. Okay. Okay. Louis Hamilton, you've heard? Yes, ma'am. Um, okay. So, you are watching Formula yes, Aces? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, which team is he representing? Ma'am, Louis Hamilton drives for Mercedes-Benz AMG Petronas team. And since team. how long he's been with them? Ma'am, the, uh, he has been with the team since 2011. And before that? And before that, he was driving for the McLaren team. Uh, yeah. Yes, and cooking is one yes, of your hobbies. Yes, ma'am. Why is this, uh, uh, you know, cooking industry, if I'm talking about the industry in particular, yes, they're mostly male chefs. Yes, ma'am. Why is it male dominant? Uh, ma'am, I believe that the usual glass ceiling effect that is seen in every industry is also particularly uh, is also there in the cooking industry as well. And secondly, I believe the social stigma that is attached to towards the profession of cooking and being seen and being imposed on but women as a household job. In terms job. of cooking, yes, women are cooking at home. Yes, ma'am. So this is an exception where you know women are yes, the ones who are cooking at home, but when you come go out, you see in the profession they are not there. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, the, the concept of patriarchy which comes in and imposes cooking as a responsibility on the woman rather than a profession that they could take up and this social taboo or the social myth needs to be, uh, is one of the reasons why it, uh, we cannot see a lot of women professional chefs. Okay, one last question. Yes, what is happening to Paytm? Ma'am, uh, not uh, recollecting over it. No, ma How are no. the stocks happening and what is the situation of the stocks of Paytm? So, do you know about Paytm? Yes, ma'am. I know about Paytm. What is the revenue model of Paytm? How do they make money? I'm not aware of the exact uh, revenue model of Paytm at this point. Okay. No ideas, no guesses, nothing. What could be the revenue model? No, How do they make sorry, money? You have never it. thought about it? Haven't thought about it yet, ma'am. I believe uh, they uh, they work on the commission rate model where the transactions, every transaction that a customer does on a PTM, a similar percentage of commission goes to PTM. You use it? Yes, ma'am. I do use it. Okay, fine. Okay, thank okay. you. Yes, sir. So, if my interview is over. Thank you, sir.
what is your assessment self assessment Sir, so I believe uh, some of the areas I was uh, lacking in giving the precise answer to some of the topics, uh, to, uh, simply because I have not gone through those topics as of yet. Uh, so these are uh, one of the. This is one thing that I felt that I could not give precise answers for many of the questions that was being asked. But overall, you have done well. Yes, mm -hmm. overall knowledge is good. Thank quite you, confident, thank you, and you are quite honest in telling that I don't know. No, it's yes. good. Read more about Kerala. Sure, sir. Mm -hmm. And if you do not know, say sorry. Like this, Agastya Mala. Yes, sir. It's not in Idiki. Okay. It's in Trivandrum district. Trivandrum district. Okay. Sir. It's not uh, like Irula tribes. Kani tribes. Kani tribes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and this, I believe, I believe. Just change over sometimes. I okay. think, in my view, in my opinion. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir. Every time telling, I believe, I believe, I think. Okay. Sir. So can otherwise it's quite good. Okay. Just keep on reading international affairs. Okay. Sir. And I contact with other members. Okay. When you are. Responding to one, ensure that you look towards other sources. Otherwise, okay. mm -hmm. listen to the question carefully and then respond. Okay. Uh, you are very good. Thank you, sir. Uh, just when is your interview? April 19th, sir. April 19th. You still have time. Yes. Sir. Current affairs will be very important. Okay. Your first preference is foreign service. Yes, sir. You know? So, so many VAPs coming and going. Yes, sir. And keep track of the final handout given by the external other. If you go to their website, they put it on that. Yes. Sure, so maintain that stand. Oops. Okay. It's very interesting. Of course, happening in neighborhood is also important. Oops. You know, Sri Lanka and all that. Oops. So all that. And the economic issues, the exchange rate, Oops. the amount of foreign exchange we are carrying, all this keep track. Oops. Huh? Good. Oops. Thank you. Yeah, good. Or all this. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All the rest. All Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Will you wear a suit or will you go? Yes, I'm, I'm planning to wear it. Just that I haven't purchased yeah, one yet. Yeah, it will be nice if you wear a hat. Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir.